you don't need to hear all the other posts if you're new to my situation. All you need to know is that one, my fiance, Faye, has a sleep disorder and has been sleep talking, sleep walking, having night terrors, and other frightening sleep disturbances since she was a child. Two, we've been together five years. Three, we recently stayed at a cabin her parents owned way up in the mountains in Colorado, whereupon we discovered an enormous, handmade dream catcher in the woods out back, and we began hearing creepy voices at night that mimicked people we knew, including family members who were dead. Four, my fiance's sleep disturbances got out of control during our stay, and she appeared to be communicating with the things outside at night. Now we're back home in California, but something might have followed us. I took Faye to see her doctor yesterday, and we hesitantly explained what was going on with her. I took Faye to see her doctor yesterday, and we hesitantly explained what was going on with her. I left out the paranormal stuff because I didn't want to get put in a ward. She seemed really concerned about Faye, ordered a blood test, gave her a physical, asked her about her diet, drugs, medications, etc. Faye and I are both non-drinkers, non-drug users, and neither of us are on medication. She wants Faye to be evaluated by a psychiatrist next week. For now, she gave her a sedative at night and some anti-anxiety medication. She wants us to get some fresh air and get out of the house, so we're going on a hike today. A redditor named Pixie Dix brought up the possibility that the child's voice outside of the cabin asking, When do we go inside? might not refer to inside the cabin, but rather inside of Faye. This really worries me because it corroborates some of the strange behavior she's been exhibiting in her sleep. I contacted the park ranger who is pretty sympathetic to our situation and he's going to get in touch with some of the members of his tribe who have experience with spiritual guidance and medicine. He is convinced that Faye and I have attracted the attention of the ones who come out of the mines. Lucky us. More on that later. Some redditors have recommended that I test Faye to see if it's really her. So yesterday evening, against my wallet's advice, I took her to our favorite steakhouse. I only ever order one meal there. Medium tri-tip, house macaroni and cheese, and a bottled root beer. Faye only ever orders one meal there too. The barbecue chicken sandwich with mac and cheese and a salad with ranch dressing. And a Coke. She drinks Coke only. Her blood is mostly Coca-Cola. Faye took a long time deciding what to order and ended up ordering a fucking New York strip. I jokingly told her to order for me too, and she said, I don't know what you want. She also ordered water instead of Coke. Usually, we have arguments over how much Coke she drinks, and how I'm always trying to get her to hydrate better and just drink water. This was really unsettling to me. At the end of the night, when we were walking back to my car, I kissed her temple and asked if she still liked it when I called her Noodle. She said, of course. I've never called her Noodle in my entire life. Her nickname has always been Monkey Toes. Long story. When we got home, she cracked open a Coke and got on Facebook, which is completely normal for her. This threw me off. One thing that's been on my mind lately is the song that the little kid was singing outside of the cabin. For those of you who don't know, in the middle of the night at this cabin in Colorado, we heard a child's voice coming out of the forest, singing an eerie song. I've been catching myself humming it almost every day. Oh, soul me, I do. I asked Faye if it meant anything to her, and I sang it to her while she was sitting on the couch. After a few repetitions, she sort of went blank, like she was hypnotized, and just wobbled back and forth ever so slightly for about eight seconds, then snapped out of it and said, I don't remember that. Last night is when shit hit the fan. I haven't gotten a full night's rest in over a week now, and it's starting to make me feel over-emotional and crazy. Faye started murmuring in her sleep around one, as usual, but I couldn't understand much of it. She sat up in bed, took the sheets off of her legs like she was going to get up, but I grabbed her arm and asked her what she was doing. She said, tell them to leave. Her eyes were completely shut. I asked her, who? Who needs to leave? She sat there for about two minutes, not speaking, just sitting straight up. I asked again, and she replied, there's a man at the door. Then about 10 seconds later, and a woman at the bottom of the stairs. Of course, this made every single hair on my entire body bristle. 
I got up and went downstairs, turning on every single light as I went and carrying my buck knife with me. Nobody was in our house. I looked in every single room downstairs and even in the backyard. When I got back to the stairwell, I heard someone stomping around upstairs. Someone had turned the light to the upstairs hallway off. I stood at the bottom of the stairs, looking up, trying to listen, but the noises stopped. So I walked back up into our bedroom and got back into bed. It was likely that Faye had gotten up to go to the bathroom or sleepwalked a bit in the room and went back to bed. I fell asleep pretty fast, but woke up again only a few minutes later, and Faye was gone. I heard movement down the hall, so I looked out into it, and I saw Faye coming out of the other bedroom. She staggered down the hall toward me, then stopped, turned around, and walked back in the other direction. She did this seven or eight times. She was walking in almost the same way as the night before, standing really high up on her toes, her legs totally rigid like they were made of cement, and her arms completely limp and flopping back and forth. It was extremely fucking terrifying seeing her move like that. She was totally graceless. It was like someone was testing out a human body for the first time. At the same moment, I heard a noise through the bedroom window and ran over to check, thinking someone was really at the front door. You can see down to the front entryway from our bedroom window. Off in the distance, about 30 yards out, somebody was walking back and forth in the exact same way that Faye was. He was humming loudly and intermittently singing. The song sounded like the one I sang to Faye earlier, the one the child sang outside the cabin. I ran back into the hall, woke Faye up, and brought her downstairs. I opened the front door to get a better look at the man, but he was gone. Today, at the behest of a few Redditors, I asked Faye if she'd ever been to the cabin before we visited. I don't know why I never thought to ask her this before. She said nothing about it when we stayed there for several nights. She was hesitant to answer me, and eventually admitted that she'd been there once when she was 14. She and her parents went snowshoeing up in the mountain. A few hours later, I emailed her mother and asked the same question. She told me Faye had gone to the cabin multiple times as a child, but stopped going when she went into high school. I can't figure out which one of them is lying to me. I haven't told Faye this, but I'm thinking of going back to the cabin and meeting with the ranger. He wants to do some ritual with the dreamcatcher we found, if it's still there, and he says he'll bring his friends and try to cleanse the house and the surrounding area. This will cost like $500 just to fly out there, but if this shit gets any worse, it might be worth it. A Redditor sent me a private message, telling me to investigate the guest room to see what Faye was doing in there. She had written the number 5 on the window with her finger. I only saw it because of the condensation from the cold this afternoon. It's written backwards so that someone standing in our backyard can read it. <laughs>